there's something new for Uncle Sam. It's out with the pound and in with kilogram. Out with the foot, in with the meter. Out with the quart and in with the liter. We're all going metric. Now, what's all this fuss about? Hasn't the foot served us well enough? And the yard and the rod and the mile, too. Why change? Why should we go metric? Well, I'll tell you why by way of a tale. Tucked away in the Sawtooth Mountains is a strange village inhabited by a lovable people called Wimples. Wars, crime, and other ugly things are unknown because every Wimple is too busy making butter, milling flour, baking cookies, cakes, and generally making life comfortable. And like everyone else, they have a system of weights and measures to help them in their daily lives. Unfortunately, their measuring system is in a mess. A sack of flour, for instance, weighs in at so many tuttles. Tuttle is the town mayor, and one tuttle is his normal weight. But Wimples weigh using many other units, too, from brown boots to wackles, from barley corns to gobbles. With all these units, it's no wonder that Wimples hate to measure. After all, how many Tuttles are there in a gobble? Well, not far away is another village of Wimples, and I'm sorry to report that things are not much better there. What with a different economy and some new ideas, they have a different system for measuring. But it is just as disorderly and just as confusing. The only difference is that Branberry Punch and not Pastry gets confused with unfortunate consequences every now and then. What makes matters doubly bad is that the two villages engage in trade. Punch for pastry, pastry for punch. But if brown booths and tuttles get mixed up, what about brown booths and barley wigs? gobbles and girdles. The wimples were in a real stew. Each village has its own measuring troubles, and between the two it was double trouble. Until word came one day that other wimple villages in the next valley had invented a new streamline measuring system, everyone understood it, and trade was a pleasure. Now here's a question. Suppose you were Mayor Tuttle. What would you do? Stick with double trouble, or switch over to the new system. We, you, me, and everyone else must answer that very question. Just about the whole world is measuring metrically and having an easier time of it. England was one of the last to be swept up in the metric tide, but by 1965, they too were going metric. Now North America is standing out conspicuously. And Canada wants to go metric, but it's waiting for us. Our two economies are that closely tied. Well, good grief, who can keep track of the inch and foot, yard and rod, league and mile, teaspoon, tablespoon, pint and quart, bushel and a peck, not to mention avoir du poids and others too. You see, like the Wimples, our measuring system is haphazard, based mainly on folkways. Why, did you know that the inch was once defined as the length of three barley corns, round and dried when laid end to end? Shades of Mayor Tuttle. Well, isn't it time we forget all this and go metric? We won't be all alone. In 1968, Congress commissioned a three-year study, and the study said in part, <clears throat> every country of economic importance except America is using the metric system, or has decided to. Canada is waiting on us. International trade can be increased and made simpler by going metric. America is slowly drifting over to the metric system anyway, we might as well get there in an orderly fashion. 
<clears throat> There's something new for Uncle Sam. It's out with the pound and in with kilogram. Out with the foot and in with the meter. Out with the quart and in with the liter. The U.S. of A. is going metric. You know, the metric system is hardly new. Thomas Jefferson talked about a metric America, and that was a long time ago. So did John Quincy Adams and others after him. Of course, Europeans have been using the metric system for years. So have our own scientists. When Sputnik went up in 1957, the U.S. Army went metric, at least as far as weapons go. And druggists have been using metric measurements for more than 10 years. No, the system is hardly new. Now here's what it's all about. The meter. We have measured length in inches, feet, yards, fathoms, rods, and miles. But now we can simplify and work with the meter. One meter is just a shade over one yard. 39.37 inches, to be exact. For longer lengths, add kilo to meter, and you get kilometer. Kilo means 1,000, so a kilometer is 1,000 meters. Incidentally, a kilometer is about six-tenths of a mile. For measuring pencils and other short things, add centimeter to meter and you get centimeter. Centimeter means one hundredth. So one hundred centimeters makes a meter. One centimeter is a bit less than a half an inch. For really short lengths, add milla to meter and you get millimeter. Milla means one thousandth. So one thousand millimeters make a meter. And that's all. The meter is where it all begins. The kilometer is useful in measuring long distance, being 1,000 times as long. For short lengths, you use the centimeter, one hundredth of a meter. Or the millimeter, one thousandth of a meter. Then all you have to do is know how to multiply and divide by 10. So the meter is fundamental in measuring length. What about volume? The liter, used in measuring volume. A shade larger than a quart, about 1.06 quarts, in fact. As with kilometer, add kilo to liter and you get kiloliter, 1,000 liters. For measuring very small quantities, add milla to liter and use milliliters. Remember, the liter is the main metric unit for measuring volume, just about a quart. One liter of milk, 50 liters of gas, and that's the way it's done. So much for length and volume. There's weight to measure, too. The kilogram used to measure metric weight. A little more than two pounds. 2.2 is close enough. The kilogram is good for weighing meat and people and trucks and anything that's not too light. Otherwise, take off kilo and what's left? The gram, of course. One thousandth of a kilogram. The gram is heavier than a pin, but lighter than a dime. If the gram is too heavy, which it rarely is, there's always the milligram, used by druggists and folks like that. Length, volume, weight. What's left to measure? Temperature. Celsius. Have you heard the term? Celsius is in and Fahrenheit is out. Maybe you have heard of the centigrade scale. Well, Celsius is the man who invented it. And now, to honor him, we call centigrade Celsius. The Celsius scale is based on the temperature of water. Zero is freezing. The temperature of water just turned to ice. 100 is boiling. 
the temperature of water just turned to steam at sea level. Most temperatures you measure in between, unless you live at the North Pole. Is there anything left to measure? Time, for one. Well, you'll be happy to know there's no change here, because metric time is also figured in seconds, minutes, and hours. There's some other scientific units, none of which are new, and you already know the important changes. There's kilogram and the Celsius, and the meter and the liter. Everything else comes from dividing and multiplying by 10, or 100, or 1,000. Scientists and engineers go even further. So how will this metric change take place? Not all at once, not overnight, but slowly over the next 10 years. There are two kinds of changes to be reckoned with, measuring changes and changes in hardware. Measuring changes are easier. It's a matter of education in the schools, relabeling package goods, revising roadside signs, and so on. It'll take time, there's no denying. Well, for example, the post office will have to call in more than 300,000 customary small letter scales and issue metric ones instead. But it will all be by schedule, and one day the work's all through and postage will be by the gram. Apples and oranges by the kilogram. Hardware changes will be tougher to make, and they will take a lot more time. Everything from the common milk carton to dimensions of lumber to sizes of bolts, diameters of tires will have to be redesigned. But not all at once. Present packages can be filled with metric amount and still they have to be redesigned for other reasons. Many machines can easily be converted. If not, metric replacements can wait until the old ones retire. Some industries, like the bearing industry, already metric. Now all these changes are very important. Metric countries are standardizing all their manufactured goods. That means an English nut will fit a German bolt and a Japanese strike plate will fit a Russian switch and an Australian gear will fit an English car. Very efficient instead of countless different sizes. There are only just a few, and they're interchangeable. Result? Increased international trade. Now you tell me, will the Chinese buy an American wrench if they don't fit metric bolts? Will the French buy American doors if they get them in a jam? Will Lithuanians buy U.S. presses if the only replacement parts that fit are American, and it takes two years to get them. Not likely. Standardization, that's the key, and it's all expressed in metric terms. So we'll have to change if we want our share of international trade, and we do. Whatever it costs to make this change is small compared with the new business that will come our way. Of course, some things will never change. It makes no sense to relay every railroad track just to make them a standard metric distance apart. Printers will still measure in pikas and astronomers in light years because these units are convenient, even though they're not official, metrically speaking. Some measures will never change, but the majority certainly will. So will many sayings. A pinch to grow an inch will become a pinch to grow 2.54 centimeters. And what happens to an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? I'm afraid the Indianapolis 500 becomes the Indy 830, and I won't even tackle the 10-gallon half. Now, my story about our new metric America is almost at an end, but give me a moment to wind things up by telling you what we have to gain. We replace a lot of complicated units with a few simple ones, all related by factors of 10. Everyone's arithmetic will be simpler and more accurate. 
Did you know that the aerospace industry can save over $50 million a year in calculating time alone, according to one official? The hardware changeover will give many industries a chance to clean house. For instance, 116 screw thread sizes are being reduced to 25. And America's share of international trade can increase dramatically through standardization. So like I said, there's something new for Uncle Sam. It's out with the pound and in with the kilogram. Out with the foot and in with the meter. Out with the quart and in with the liter. America's going metric. It's a darn good thing. <laughs>